transforming marketing measurement at 3M. So I'm Chris Comstock, Chief Product Officer at Clarivine. All right, and I'm Russ Vanderweel. I lead our digital marketing analytics capability team at 3M. All right, so I'm gonna cover a little bit kind of how we think about data standards and the problem. Russ is gonna go into the journey that he's taken um, at 3M on transferring measurement uh, with Clarivine, uh, cover some key takeaways, and then we'll open it up to some Q&A. All right, data standards. All right, maybe wondering Japanese theater, where does that kind of fit into this? And so, uh, as we think about data standards and kind of the marketing challenge that exists uh, within organizations for, for our customers, um, it kind of always come back to this class I took in college um, on Japanese theater. And there's, you know, a lot of people, there's drama that goes into it. I mean, how many people use spreadsheets still and see spreadsheets floating around the organization? Um, and so I, I always come back to this as like, there's always a plot, and obviously trying to get the customer journey, uh, customers along that journey uh, with good data. And so this is, um, I think everyone's familiar with this slide, or a version of this slide. Um, marketing transformation's hard, right? There's all these different technology systems. It's changing, um, it's changing, you know, almost every week there's new logos that come up, and I think it's always the, what, you know, MarTech 8000 is really 10,000, it's kind of always behind. And so it's, you know, this is just always a good visualization that I think everyone's familiar with. And so at Clarivine, we really think about, you know, as we look at an organization, and, and Russ is gonna share some of this at 3M, um, there's really kind of three pillars. There's the organizational model, the technology model, and the data model. So we take a look at the organization model. Every organization is different. There's different teams. Uh, there's different people, in some cases, different business units with different objectives. Um, there's also, you know, a lot of times we focus on the internal teams and the, the people you work closely with, but there's also, at most organizations, there's the agencies and the people who are helping augment that team. Um, trying to create collaboration across all of those different people, regardless of the organization structure, can be really hard. Then there's the technology model. Um, you know, we looked at that MarTech, and obviously no one uses all those different solutions, but um, everybody has the set of tools that they want, um, used by different teams and different functions. There's different analytic systems. In some cases, we see different analytic systems being used by different teams for different reasons. Um, you know, but across all the different journey, there's all these different technology points being run by all those different uh, people that we kind of showed on the last slide, creating all this data, um, often managed independently uh, without a single data model. And so then it gets down to that, that data model. Um, if we look at the marketing data model specifically, everything from customers to the audiences you're trying to reach to campaigns, ads, content, creative, um, tracking links, the links that go into the, all the different experiences, obviously you know, things like cookies going away makes that much more difficult. Um, but somewhere there is the spirit of a data model that exists in, in oftentimes different forms across different teams. So putting it into text fields and those different point solutions and those technology systems. People are trying to follow a data model, but are often doing it in a vacuum. And so when you put it all together and you take those three pieces, and obviously the visual here from um, kind of a global perspective, but um, usually only a fraction of those people are actually following that consistent data model um, and, and doing it consistently you know, for every campaign and every experience or every piece of content that's being launched. Um, but often there's, there's disconnect between those different teams because they're, they're doing what they need for their specific team, specific business unit. And when we think about the organizational kind of ecosystem at play, you've got kind of the overarching organization and you've got, you know, putting that all together, the different teams and people, you know, ultimately aligned around uh, a single mission for the business. You've got data contributors, those people that are in the systems, in the tools, creating campaigns, creating creative. You've got the software vendors, we mentioned the technology model, um, different point solutions used for different, uh, different uh, needs, um, all creating data, all flowing into the data admin. So somewhere in the organization, maybe many of you are responsible for trying to create that alignment around the data model. How do you organize all that information to make sense of it, to make fast business decisions? And then once that gets into that data model, the data consumers. So who are the people that are using the data, the dashboards, to make sense of what that data is, what campaign was launched, um, to be able to make the business decisions, to be able to optimize those campaigns or experiences. 
And so our goal, when we think about it, back to the, the Japanese theater example, we want to take that drama out of the data. And so you, how does that happen? By having people, teams, and technology have a shared understanding of their data. So when it goes into those systems, everyone understands what campaign, what creative, and are able to make fast, trusted business decisions. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Russ to talk about how he's gone through that transformation at 3M. All right, thanks very much, Chris. So as I mentioned in my brief intro, I'm the responsible for digital marketing analytics. Um, I'm gonna tell some stories about our journey at 3M. I have a lot of stories about 3M because I've been there for almost 30 years. Uh, obviously, I didn't start in digital marketing uh, 30 years ago, but I have been involved with our digital presence well since the last century. 20th century, I started working on uh, 3M.com and have been more or less living there since then. I uh, started as a process engineer, by the way, did lots of cool stuff in factories all over the place. And I guess at that time, if you knew something about how things worked in the inner workings of software and technology, you can make a career in uh, digital. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, a little bit more recent journey I'll share. Um, this is our kind of a, I'd say the last seven years journey that we've been working on trying to improve uh, digital marketing analytics capabilities and how we track uh, and, and manage campaign data. So going back to about 2016, we had a lot of chaos. We still have some chaos, but we had a tremendous amount of chaos around how people were tracking uh, campaigns and, and collecting data. And it was sort of a grassroots effort at that time. A lot of uh, digital analysts were getting together saying, hey, let's try to do this in a consistent way. Um, so in 2017, we actually created for the first time an overall URL, we call it the, the 3M URL tracking code and the standard, which I'll get into in a more detail as I go through this. But that was our first attempt. We, we sort of surveyed how is everybody doing this all over the world and we took all those requirements and we said, well, okay, here's a campaign tracking code that meets everybody's needs at least to a certain degree. And it's a big complicated thing as a result of that, which uh, is still in place today. Um, we developed some simple web forms that we allowed people to use to build those tracking codes and had some degree of uh, success in getting some global consistency. This was even before we had Adobe Analytics. Our global launch of Adobe Analytics was on January 1 of 2018. It was a big monumental time. For the first time ever, we had a consistent web analytics platform for everyone to use. The, the next few things I'm highlighting on the journey here are, are pretty big transformational things that were happening at 3M at the same time. We really pivoted the entire operating model of the company from a very, uh, I'd say, geographic-based and discrete, like in a lot of autonomy and authority at the local level to a globally aligned business model. So we have sort of pivoted the company on its side and aligned around four major business groups that have uh, all the authority. A lot of change happened with that. Um, completely new roles were defined, completely new KPIs for everybody. And I'm not talking about digital, I'm talking about the company. <laughs> Everything from how P&Ls are managed, how product is managed. And that really drove a lot of emphasis and focus on data and analytics in a, in a very positive way. Um, we had four business groups, four CMOs, but we aligned around some major metrics. And in about 2021, um, as we started looking at those metrics and shining a bright light on our data quality, we realized hey, we need some help to improve the data standards that we have. So that really led us to our partnership with Clarivine in a couple of phases that I'll get into. So diving a little bit more into that organization model, and, and as Chris said, we definitely had all of this complexity. Um, as I mentioned, all around the world, everybody in the, the regions and the countries and every division, they were sort of doing things their own way. Of course, we have many agency partners also influencing how data is put together. And when we worked with our CMOs, uh, the, the newly assigned CMOs a few years ago, they said, well, one of the things we need to do is understand how should marketing be measured? What are the KPIs of marketing? How do we understand the value of marketing and the roles? So that was a pretty big effort, a big project, and I'm not gonna go into this in every detail, but 
the, the CMOs collectively had a project, we aligned around six major ways that marketing at 3M is going to be evaluated and measured. So what's the success uh, KPIs of a CMO? These are the, the six dimensions of that. And in particular, the first two of those around demand generation and how do we measure marketing program and execution had a lot of direct connection to data quality. You can imagine, well, we're trying to understand now globally how a marketing program is executed, but we have no consistency of how we're even defining that or measuring that or putting in standards around the, the measurement. So that was really our charge and led us to a lot of the improvements that were on this journey. So if I look at this, this sort of realignment of the company, the CMO metrics, what that really led us to was a really good alignment around KPIs, around objectives for the company, the goals of marketing. Um, I'm not really telling that story here, but in parallel, we also have been standardizing around many of the analytics platforms and tools. So I mentioned Adobe Analytics. That was a piece of the journey, but as a company, we also went to a major cloud-based strategy for all of our data. We are moving data into Microsoft Azure and into Snowflake data tables, not just digital marketing stuff, but really everything in the company is something we call the digital core. And we're standardizing around Power BI for visualization of, of data that's across many uh, dimensions. So all well and good, lots of green check marks on the alignment, but we still have pretty significant amount of complexity around people and teams. Just because we have this intent to have these global business models, we still have people all over the world. They're operating in different teams. They have marketing agencies all over the place. So we have this ongoing challenge of, well, how do we coordinate uh, the work of all those people? This really led us to developing a business case around looking at and specifically, uh, maybe it's kind of the Trojan horse, but the, the work on URL tracking code became a, a little bit of a shining beacon that we're saying, well, if we can tackle this one, this issue, uh, we'll have a lot of success. Um, this, this thing on the right is just an internal template that was used to, you know, to present to one of these big tiered review teams who has to approve the budget and the, then the MarTech change. But, uh, that detail aside, I pulled a couple of things out of there that we were able to, because of our integration with Adobe Analytics or implementation, we were able to measure very precisely a couple of important dimensions. One was the what we called the process compliance. So I mentioned we had these web forms people were using to create the codes. We were able to use Adobe to directly measure to what degree were the codes created in that system. And Shockingly, we only had a 17% global compliance when we looked at all the codes created. So clearly we had some issues with the process. And not surprisingly from that, we have a lot of defective tracking codes when we looked in Adobe Analytics. We were able to measure that quite directly and found that a quarter of our tracking codes were not accurate. Now, obviously this didn't please the CMOs who were like, hey, we need to have this super, this is a super important KPI for us. So it was a pretty easy business case for us to say, well, let's get after this. Um, it didn't take away, of course, all the complexity. We still have, even with uh, this global alignment of the company, we still have quite a bit of complexity to manage. Um, I mentioned these business groups that we have realigned to, but we're really a, a big global diversified manufacturer. We have business groups that are in safety, industrial, transportation, electronics, consumer, and healthcare. So we're kind of all over the place. Uh, and we have all the logos that you might imagine, all the partners that you might imagine. You know, we do B2B and B2C. So trying to manage that complicated ecosystem, we really needed to figure out uh, a good partner. And we settled in on Clarivine as being one of the core elements of this ecosystem. And I'm showing a few of the key pieces of our MarTech ecosystem here, Not certainly not all, but I'd say some of the biggest pillars. Uh, we have Salesforce for CRM. We're using Eloqua for marketing automation, uh, Sprinkler for social, uh, of course, Adobe Analytics, and I already mentioned Snowflake and Power BI. And we really see uh, in this ecosystem Clarivine being a key partner for us in helping to coordinate across all of these different pieces. Some of those lines are even though they're all drawn as solid lines, many of them are dotted lines at the moment. You know, we, this is more of an aspirational view of a connected ecosystem. But it is certainly 
logically and, and semantically connected now. Um, going back to these stories I'm telling are a little out of order, but I mentioned that we, we surveyed the world and said, well, let's build a tracking code that works all for one, one for all. Uh, this, this goes back almost seven years. We created this uh, 13 term long concatenated tracking code for 3M, and this is still in use today. Uh, I'll get to change management in a bit, but it's hard to change stuff. You, you change one element of this and there's all kinds of knock on effects that uh, analysts don't like. Um, but we have here a whole bunch of semantic dimensions that are important to 3Mers when we look at how we analyze things, how we understand the markets they're going to, the businesses, the divisions, the geographies. These are always important dimensions in any analytics team. So we created this code and you can also see we are using UTM underscore term as the tracking code parameter. Also an interesting history and legacy where we had lots of agencies that were using Google Analytics and this all predates our move to Adobe Analytics. Uh, so I'll say a little more about what we would like to have in the future, but this is our, our system today. Um, we started this evolution with uh, the implementation of Clarivine uh, last year, I think it was, and we started with that, I'll say, simple piece of the data model itself. So we're looking at a few of the bricks of this green platform. We are right now actually working on implementing some expansion of that. So I, our strategy has been to get some wins and sort of elbow our way into some new areas. Uh, we're working on standardizing around campaign names, campaign hierarchy across the MarTech tools that I showed before, and also adding in some additional new metadata around campaign KPIs and targets. So we're really looking at expanding this. Um, on the right side of here, you know, aspirationally, we're working as a next phase into a much tighter integration into how campaign names are set up, managed, controlled with all of this great metadata in marketing automation, in CRM, and in our so social and paid media channels. So looking specifically to the first part of this and, and sort of how Clarivine works, uh, if you haven't seen, this is one of the big wins for us here has been the usability. Um, it's a very simple template driven approach, lots of value lists with controlled values that people can't modify. Uh, it really helps with it. You can drag and drop, you can cut and paste. Really all of the barriers that we heard for usability of our previous approach went away overnight. Um, and that was when we looked, I'll go kind of thinking way back to that business case and I said we have really low process compliance. One of the big reasons we heard is it's hard, uh, didn't easily extend to our agency partners and you know, we still get a little bit of that but we've really been able to get rid of most of those complaints through the use of the Clarivine system. Another piece of this uh, is in the past, we only were able to put these really weird coded values. So AAD, well, you probably don't know, but that's Automotive Aftermarket Division, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, and SIBG is our Safety and Industrial Business Group. So these are things that people know about, but if we are able to, and now we can with Clarivine, we want both of those coded values and the long form versions of them as additional metadata. So. The, the version we had before, all we had was this coded mess, and now we're able to put in all the additional metadata in long form. So that was our, uh, the way that uh, we're looking at metadata. And then I just wanna describe a little bit of how that Clarivine then works into a broader ecosystem that we have already established. So over on the lower right here, our users are creating these campaign tracking codes in Clarivine. And just to give some order of magnitude, we have I'd say on the order of many hundreds of users of Clarivine who are building tracking codes. And they're building them at a rate that's pretty high. Many thousands per month are being created. So that's the kind of rate that Clarivine is used to create tracking codes. What happens when a user submits a set of tracking codes into Clarivine is we have a direct API integration into Adobe Analytics. So if you're familiar with Adobe Analytics, there is a campaign variable, V0, you might know it by name. Um, it, it sends the full tracking code into V0 as our tracking code. It also classifies that dimension with all of that metadata that's really great. So it directly inserts the classified dimensions, um, a few dozen dimensions. 
At the same time, we're sending through direct integrations from Clarivine uh, an email to the requester. So here's the stuff you just said so they can use those codes in activation. Um, and we also have an output that goes directly to, happens to go through an Azure blob store and into Snowflake. So this is the way that we get all this data connected to many other things. Um, ultimately, all of our Adobe data goes into Snowflake, all of our sales data, and, and many things. So for a lot of downstream use cases that are more complex than can be done just directly in a bespoke tool, uh, that's our place of choice. Um, then the lower left there is not really a direct connection, but you can see the fully qualified URL with the tracking code. When that is seen in the wild, it finds its way into Adobe Analytics. We use, still use marketing channel processing rules. One of the elements of the code is identifies marketing channel, so that's a key piece of our um, marketing channel analytics within Adobe Analytics. So that gets set, uh, but otherwise it's really just the V0 tracking code or campaign code that gets uh, set in the, in the data layer on our site. We're gonna take another little diversion. I mentioned this uh, Snowflake. We have at 3M Many years ago, we built our own uh, URL shortener. It's uh, pretty cool. It's called go.3m.com. It allows anybody to just, it's similar to Bitly or something like that, but um, we created our own uh, homegrown or internally developed solution. So when we built this whole ecosystem with Clarivine, many of our users said, hey, it'd be cool if we had a way to automatically create uh, short URLs and QR codes from this. So we built a little automation, kind of a simple tool but when that data finds its way to Snowflake, uh, because we had that cool integration, we built this tool that we call Tracker, uh, T-R-A-Q-R, clever name. Um, but what it does is it just is always listening to that place in Snowflake table and it automatically sends an API request to our go.3m.com service, creates a shortened URL for that, uh, it has the form of C for Clarivine, and seven letters randomly assigned. And then it creates both a, a small and a large version of a QR code. So our users don't have to go and create those things later, figure it out if they wanna have a shortened URL. Um, our shortened URL service has a, a direct integration into Adobe Analytics. So we can actually see right in Adobe how many times that shortened URL has been invoked. Um, that was another API built that we built years ago when we started with Adobe. So. Pretty cool little utility, it gets a lot of use. We've had a lot of um, demand and I guess kudos for being able to do that just out of the box. Um, so looking again at the Adobe integration a little tighter um, for those who are sort of deep into Adobe Analytics. On the left is what we used to be doing. Well, we had a, a very complex set of regex, regex expressions that would take that 13 term code, it actually used to be 12, then we expanded it to 13, so we had to uh, create a whole bunch of complicated regex ex expressions. And if you're familiar with that, regex is not happy if you come to it with something that's got a problem. So when we had codes that are wrong, we were just inserting all sorts of data in error into Adobe Analytics. So that all went away overnight, really, when we changed to using the Clarivine API directly. So we have these 24, 25 dimensions that are part of the tracking code setup in Clarivine and we just directly insert them through the API. That was a super easy setup on, on both sides. So a lot of simplification happened there. So it kind of summarize this kind of journey that we've been on. Um, with that integration and setting up tracking codes in Clarivine. As I just mentioned, our old approach, we had these 25 processing rules. We had 13 classified dimensions. They were all based on that tracking code being parsed out and having it be perfectly accurate. It would only get classified when we saw traffic and we had a lot of data quality issues. What we're doing now is with the simplified API integration, we are able to classify 24 dimensions, so we have more data. Um, it happens right as soon as the codes are created and one of those elements is used for marketing channel. I do have a vision for this. Um, we actually want to have a much tighter API integration through Clarivine across all of those uh, MarTech 
elements that I was sharing earlier. What we're working on right now is actually thinking a little more abstract. So if you think about our tracking code, it's at a very tactical and detailed level. You know, you're trading, creating a tracking code for every post and, and every permutation of what can be in all those dimensions. We're actually building now a much more comprehensive semantic model of what do we mean by campaign? What do we mean by campaign hierarchy in Salesforce and in marketing automation tools? And we're abstracting out things at a higher level of concept. So some of the data really shouldn't be defined at every tracking code. It should be at a higher level concept. So something as simple as campaign name, which is where we're starting, is had been previously defined in every single system. And it turns out people weren't always using the same exact name. So we're, we're going to be using Clarifying to say, you are a campaign namer. You can be the one who sets these up. And these other systems will rely on the campaign names that have been set up. Um, we're able to leverage this, this new global structure we have to drive that consistency. Um, we'd also like to eventually get to an uh, obfuscated code, so meaning that we'll use CID, the more standard Adobe Analytics parameter for campaign tracking code, and for the most part, just have an obfuscated code. That, that's going to be some change management because people love their codes. We've, they've been around for a long time, and even though they're not really readable, people know how to read them. <laughs> right? So it's like, oh, OK, I, I know that's my division. That's my segment. And we've, of course, over many, many years now, we've built a lot of analytics things on top of the existence of that code. So we have some change management to do, but I think um, it's all worthwhile journey uh, to go on. Um, I also mentioned the, you know, the integration. We really want these Clarivine metadata fields to be more or less real-time available. So if someone's setting up a campaign in, in Sprinkler, they should be able to see, oh, here's the campaign that was just set up by my colleague in, in Clarivine and all the metadata around that. So lots still on our journey. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Adobe Analytics and what power that brought to us. Um, these are some pretty cool-looking graphs that were part of the story. Actually, when we originally did the business case, I didn't have this high quality uh, data. But this is showing a couple of ways that I used to measure those two things I talked about before, which was, are codes being set up in the system as they should be? And are the codes that, are, that we see in the wild, are they accurate? Are they complete? Are they valid? Do they have the right data? So in Adobe Analytics, we were able to use some pretty creative use of, well, I guess straightforward use of calculated metrics and segments to say, well, here's a, here's a visit that was a tracking code-based visit. And I could use uh, some good use of calculated metrics to say, this is a valid tracking code. It, it has all the right data elements. It used a value that was part of a prescribed value field. Um, so pretty straightforward way. And we were looking at it in two different ways. One was just by looking at the, the of all the codes we see, what percent are valid. And the other one was looking at that by a visit space. So I was of the mindset, and I still am, that it's more important to look at visits. Like, that's a bigger impact than just how many we see, because you have a long tail of, of uh, codes that aren't, are rarely seen and rarely used. So just a, another little diversion. If you haven't ever used the function called approximate count distinct, it's a really powerful function. That's a <laughs> Adobe Analytics tip. That, that, that's how a lot of these were, were being calculated. Um, so this continues to be a journey that we're on, trying to improve the, the utilization, the compliance with the process, the data quality. Um, another thing with our, the way our code is set up, we can actually get deep into these, these exact graphs, but at a specific region or for a specific business or even a division. So we can get really fine-grained in, in terms of saying, we have an issue with your division, not pointing anyone out. And, and uh, saying, you know, we need to work on some change management. Um, so speaking of change management and transition, I'll just talk about that a little bit. Um, we have a big, complicated company. When we started with Adobe Analytics, actually, we developed a couple of tools um, internal. One is a pretty complete wiki. So yes, Adobe has great documentation. But like many companies, our specific implementation of Adobe Analytics is very complicated, confusing. We have our own weird quirks and metadata. 
So we have a pretty comprehensive wiki that my team maintains and manages that describes all of the things that you might need to know. So if you want to know about all the metadata related to division and segmentation, there's a page about that. Um, in particular here, we have some wiki content that's specific to Clarivine URL tracking code builder, to uh, that tracker code, the tracker system that I mentioned. We have very specific documentation about that. And we use this documentation a lot in our Yammer community. So we have a, a Yammer is our internal sort of microblogging platform. It's part of Office 365. And we have a digital marketing analytics community in particular. And it's a very active place. People ask us questions, we answer them. We often answer them with wiki content. Or if we don't have wiki content, we use that as a motivation to say, we should probably document this. If one person asked and didn't know, let's put that there. So this, um, you know, I'm not talking a lot about how we executed the organizational change model, but we have, a, would say, many thousands of people that are actively using these tools that we have uh, created to support them. I think that is what I wanted to share in terms of stories. And of course, we're going to ask some questions, but I'll turn it back to Chris. Cool. So just kind of in summary, and I think Russ touched on these, and so these may not be a big surprise here, but I think um, we see this quite often that don't, you know, don't wait for perfection. Keep it simple and, and, and get started. Um, sometimes there's big data projects and it goes on for many, many months trying to get every answer, everything right. It's like start simple, get some quick wins. I think, you know, the tracking code example is a great one. Start, start there, get things cleaned up and move on and evolve. And, and, you know, having a piece of software can help manage that change over time. Um, collaboration is more important than ever. So collaboration from your, your operations teams, your systems with your analytics systems, your agencies, people come and go in the organization. Things change, your data requirements, even though they set them today as well as you think they're set, they're gonna change, right? And change isn't a bad thing. Change is just the evolving nature of the complexity of systems and, and new use cases and ad format. And so it's you know having a way to make that change measurement um, uh, with the privacy-centric changes, like things are going away, things are always changing, um, and make it a priority. Um, we often find that many people are trying to do so many things and we all have so much going on. Um, you know, make it a priority and you can make the change, especially if you're starting with one use case or one team. Don't try and get perfection right away. 